Hey guys, Erin here with Southern Girl Exotics. Welcome back to my channel. So I keep a lot of different species that I don't necessarily breed. I know a lot of you guys are here for the gargs for the majority and I will make plenty of videos related to gargs with my time on YouTube. But I also want to make sure that I'm highlighting some other really important pets in my life and talk about some different topics that relate to them. Not necessarily always husbandry and care, but just topics that could be hurting them or good for them that we need to address or emphasize on. Bearded dragons are one of those animals in the industry that have absolutely played a huge role in what the hobby is today, as well as people's interest in the hobby. So many people start out with bearded dragons because they are probably the number one most beginner friendly pets on the market. They're also probably number one as a beginner pet, like people picking them for their first ever exotic. But you know what else they are? If they're not number one on, they're really close to. They're also number one or close to number one of being one of the most abused, neglected, and rehomed exotic across the board. I think there's a connection in us marketing these animals as beginner friendly pets and them being not only number one in rehomes, but also in abuse and neglect. And I want to talk about that. I think it's an important topic. If we don't start addressing these topics among ourselves in our industry, we are asking for people like PETA, the government, FWC to start regulating our hobby for us. I know a lot of people don't like, especially when we put videos and pictures out addressing that there are issues in the hobby. It's kind of like when that slither situation came out, there was a big divide of people that agreed with bringing it publicly to attention and sharing pictures to people that thought that this is absolutely going to bite us in the ass if we do this. I'm on the fence by both. I feel that we look a lot more responsible and we show who we really are as animal lovers when we are bringing things like this to the light, addressing it, and working as a community to change the things that we can to make it a better environment for these animals in our care. So for me, I am going to bring things to the surface and talk about them as I see fit. You don't have to support it, but it's what I want my channel to be about, and so that's what occasionally I'm going to do. Needless to say, this video is going to be on bearded dragons. I want to talk about how the way we are marketing them, things that we market as being beginner friendly with them, as well as just us as human beings are affecting these animals in captivity, in our care, in our industry. I think it's super important. So hope you guys like hope you guys like the video. Definitely give it a thumbs up. If you are new here, please subscribe. If you are not new here and constantly supporting the channel, you guys are amazing. Thank you. Just FYI, I went through last night and realized that I had tons of comments on my videos that I had never responded to. So if you are somebody that has been watching and commenting on my videos, I did go through and I tried. I think I covered everybody and responded to any questions or just comments of you guys being loving and supportive. So I finally have gotten to that. So you can check them out if you are somebody that commented. Otherwise, enjoy the video. I'll see you guys at the end of the video. All right, guys, so I got my coffee. It's late at night. I want to get this video done, and I also want to be somewhat focused so that I can get out what I'm trying to say because I think this is a pretty important topic. I think that when it comes to bearded dragons, there is not a more lovable and cute and docile and interesting, fun to interact with reptile on the market. If you've been around for a while, you kind of get this, like, arrogance that bearded dragons aren't cool. I don't care how long I'm hanging around. Bearded dragons are friggin' cool. They're cool how they look. They're amazing to own and interact with. They're so much fun. 
so you will never see me pretending like I'm too cool for bearded dragons. Not to mention, we owe bearded dragons a lot. Bearded dragons have opened up the doorway for so many people to fall in love with other reptiles. Lots of people, majority of people's first ever reptile is a bearded dragon. Mine was, and the majority of people I know, that was their first animal to really bust open the door to reptile keeping. So we owe them so much. Yet, this is one of those things that we know is going on. We see it. You can't deny it. But as animal lovers, we're just going to pretend like we don't see it. We're going to pretend like these animals aren't being neglected and abused and constantly up for rehome. So we don't talk about these issues. We can't identify them and possibly change them or problem solve on how to protect them from going through all this. I mean, some of this stuff is like simple stuff that if we just acknowledge it, we can start finding ways to tweak it and do better. But there's a history around here of just ignoring like it's not happening until we all end up losing our privilege and the government starts coming down on us and other animal rights groups start coming down on us. And we, we deserve it. We, we have earned that by ignoring and refusing to regulate our own community, our own industry. I don't want to be a part of that. So even if what I have to say doesn't make changes ever, at least I know I've brought awareness to it and I've put the information out there so that people can make their own educated decisions, whether they've been here a long time or they're just getting in the industry. Doesn't matter. As long as I feel like I'm doing my part, I can't make anybody else do theirs. So let's jump right in. Why are bearded dragons so neglected? Everybody's going to have a different opinion on this. These are just my opinions on it. One, I think it's because of how we market them. We market them as beginner pets. Pets, perfect pets for beginners, beginner friendly, entry level hobbyist friendly, however you want to word it in that phrase. The context is not what the problem is. It's the intention behind saying that. It is a selling technique. It is meant to mislead. And a lot of times it does. Number two, they are incredibly hardy, and I'll explain that in a minute. You would think that is a wonderful thing. We want animals that are incredibly hardy. That is great. Not for the bearded dragons. Number three, oversaturation. This is a perfect example of how an oversaturated market can start affecting these animals negatively, especially animals that are beginner friendly and pushed upon beginners in mass numbers. And fourth, which I think most of us can agree, it's because the human race sucks. We can be real douchebags when it comes to animals and defenseless creatures. The human race can absolutely suck. So that's part of it too. But first off, are bearded dragons beginner pets? If we're going to argue, make an argument for this or against this, do we agree that they are beginner pets? Me personally, absolutely. If there is a checklist that will describe or verify if there is such thing as a beginner pet or a beginner friendly pet, bearded dragons hit every bit on that checklist. They are hardy, number one. Hardy is... <laughs> amazing it's what we want all of our animals to animals to be especially if you are new to reptile keeping hardy is going to mean they're resilient they are going to be pretty forgiving of your mistakes early on when you're learning how to recreate environments that you've never lived in before how to do temperature gradients and operate heat lights and uvb lights and balance a varied nutritional diet for your your reptile Reptile keeping is in a whole nother plane of its own. It is nothing like keeping dogs and cats or bunnies or any of that. So there is actually levels to this shit that you have to work up to. Nobody just jumps in and knows how to do this stuff. It takes time. So it's wonderful to have a hardy pet that is going to survive the first week or two that you're kind of tweaking everything to learn and at least get the basics done so that your animal is in a comfortable environment. A lot of animals will die on you. Many of them will die on you within the first couple of weeks. Bearded dragons, you have to actually put an effort to kill these animals as well as to harm them. They are that hardy and that resilient. 
Number two, their demeanor makes them ideal pets for beginners. I don't know that there's another animal out there, reptile anyways, that is more docile, sweet, fun to entertain and interact with. I, they are just amazing. And just like crested geckos, the likelihood that your bearded dragon is actually gonna bite you is like slim to absolute none. And that is perfect for beginners because that almost guarantees that their first interaction with a reptile is going to be an amazing one. It's gonna be what the majority of them expect it's gonna be like because they're still gonna relate that interaction a lot to owning dogs and cats until they get familiar with reptiles. So they're going to want that positive, docile, interactive type of relationship with their reptiles and bearded dragons are gonna give that to you. They're amazing in that, in that aspect. Next is gonna be how well they're established in the hobby. They have been captive bred in the hobby so long that these guys do amazing with stressful situations, with change, with mistakes. I mean, they aren't going to lose, typically, they aren't going to lose their appetite. They're going to have an amazing feeding response. They don't care if they were just under bright lights for 72 hours at a show. You get them home under some warm lights, they're going to be eating for you in the next hour. They don't care if this is a whole new room with some new smells and some new shit going on. You get them under some nice light, they're going to be eating, they're going to be checking out their digs, they're going to be pooping like champs. They are amazing when it comes to dealing with stress and just being so well established that it doesn't put that added stress on us as beginners. Another one is their size. Bearded dragons have a very impressive size. And typically we relate danger to the size of an animal, especially in reptiles. Typically the smaller lizards like a crested gecko, we don't worry about the danger of a crested gecko biting you. It's not really gonna hurt. It's not gonna break any skin. But when you start thinking about like croc monitors and um, the bigger lizards of that nature, yeah, it starts getting scary. You'd be surprised if you still have a finger left after one gets you real good. So we typically relate danger to size, but with bearded dragons and their docile nature, their size is just impressive and fun. You get to have this big beefy lizard that you can hold comfortably. It makes an amazing family pet because you don't have to worry about your kids squeezing it like they would like a little crested gecko and just pop its little eyes out of its head or pull its tail off. I mean, these guys make amazing family pets and their size is super impressive, especially when like friends come over and they're not familiar with reptiles and you got this big spiky lizard that looks real intimidating and then you take it out and it's like this big fat puppy dog. They're just amazing. So bottom line, across the board, I think we all can agree that if there is such thing as a beginner pet for reptile hobbyists, bearded dragons take the cake tenfold. So if they are beginner friendly pets, then where are we going wrong? What is wrong with marketing them as beginner friendly pets? It's not so much the context of what that phrase means. We absolutely mean what we say by that. It is point blank to the point. These are easy to care for, great to interact with, great pets for beginners, great pets for people that have never kept reptiles. The problem is, is that it's meant to be misleading. It's meant to be a sales tactic when we start using that for these animals. And especially if we are using it as a selling tactic, it ends up being misinformation. And I'll tell you why. When we are pushing that aspect, when we are selling these animals to beginners, uh, we are pretty much promoting everything you don't have to worry about, everything you don't have to do with them, everything you don't have to be inconvenienced with. We just make it seem like this is something that anybody can do with their eyes closed. And while everybody's level, entry level, is going to be a little different, there are inconveniences to keeping any pet. You are going to have to upkeep its enclosure. You are going to have to feed it every day. You are going to have to go to the store to get bugs out of your way to feed it every day. You are going to have to clean up really stinky poops. You are going to have to pay an electric bill. You are going to have to rotate lights out so that you have 
proper lights when they burn out or lose their potency. You're going to have to have UVB. You're going to have to have heat. There's a lot that goes into it. You're going to have vet bills with these guys. These guys live a long time. They live 14, 15 years. There's a lot we leave out and it's meant to be left out when we are marketing these guys as beginner friendly pets, especially when it's used as a sales tactic, which is typically what it's used as. Typically you hear that most when you're about to be sold one. If we could balance that out, so what do we do in this aspect? If we could balance that out, that absolutely would help. If we are going to push these animals as beginner friendly pets or easy pets for anybody who's never kept a reptile, we need to follow that up with, but you do have to make sure you have the right lighting. You do have to make sure that you are changing out lights every six months. You do need to make sure that they have a varied diet, a nutritional diet. You do need to make sure they have regular vet visits. You do need to make sure their enclosures are clean. They rely on all of this for you. You are going to run into problems if you ever want to rehome it because there's an oversaturated market. There's just things that if we did it appropriately would make the biggest difference in the world. So the fact that we market them as beginner friendly pets absolutely is an issue if we are not being completely truthful. So if you are thinking about getting a bearded dragon and you have been told that it is a beginner friendly pet, it absolutely is in that aspect of a great pet for people that have never kept reptiles, but there is still a lot of responsibility, a lot of inconvenience as most responsibility is that goes into keeping this animal for the longevity of their life. Number two, what's wrong with marketing them as beginner pets is the clientele, the customer base that we are marketing to. We are marketing to beginners, you guessed it. Not all beginners are wonderful, animal loving, reptile researching people. But they're not all horrible, neglectful, non-committed, uninterested people either. But there's probably a 50-50 there. And 50 of this group over here is too much. 50% of this group is way too much. But either way, you're going to get, when you are using a beginner customer base, when we are marketing to a beginner customer base, you're going to get the really responsible, highly fascinated for a really long time, done their research, reptile keepers that can't wait to get a bearded dragon or their first reptile. And then you're going to get a mix of people over here. You're going to get the people that saw a YouTube video or saw their friend had a snake, so now they want reptiles. So they jump right into the first expo or ask their friend where he got it from and contact that breeder and get their first animal. You've got the people that have no interest at all in reptiles, went out for a day outing to an expo with their family and got talked into buying one. Then you have the people that literally look at reptiles as having very little value in life. They look at them almost like cockroaches or bugs. If it dies, no big deal. It can't possibly take a lot of care or time that we have to put into it. It's just a lizard. It's just a snake. Those are the people that are the problem. But we're the problem because that's who we're marketing to. These are the people that we are marketing to. We're asking for this for this animal. Especially when we are not giving all of the information. Especially if we are misleading. Even if we have a 20% group over here. That's too many if we are marketing misinformation to them. So what happens, and this is a cold hard truth to, with this group over here, when they have misinformation, they go home, one, they weren't invested anyways really into this species, they don't end up, or any reptile for that matter, they don't end up making a bond with it, then they wanna get rid of it. That leads us into our next issue, oversaturation. How is oversaturation affecting this topic? Well. Just like anything, when you have oversaturation, it becomes almost impossible to move these animals. And we start selling them for so low, we start trying to give them away, and you can't give them away. That is partly why you are seeing so many neglected and so many still being for rehome. I see people all the time trying to give their animal away, enclosure and everything. But there's no need. Nobody is wanting bearded dragons. There are so many out there you can find them everywhere. 
you can't give them away if you decide you don't want this animal anymore. If you are just a non-committed person that really went into it in the first place, you're going to have a hard time getting rid of the spirited dragon. So what do people do? Because, number four, the human race fucking sucks. What do people decide to do? Let it go. If you are somebody that lets a captive bred all its life animal go in the wild, that is your solution. You are just scum. That is just horrific. That animal has never had to fend for itself out in the wild. It's not ever been exposed to the elements and it will not survive out in the wild most likely. Number two that people do when they can't get rid of these animals now is they just leave them. They will move from apartments and just leave it in a shoebox. I've seen that before. Bearded dragons found in shoeboxes left in a closet. I have seen where people literally have just cut the lights off on the tank, stopped feeding them, and hoped that the animals would die. I mean, they're just lizards, right? They're like bugs. They'll die soon. Well, because bearded dragons are so hardy and will survive just about anything, unfortunately for bearded dragons, they will live years under horrid conditions without their needs met. So those typically are the two options that this group over here go with. So what can we do to remedy this? For starters, keep pushing people to do their research. Before you get an animal, I don't care what animal it is, I don't care if it's a reptile, do your research first. No animal out there is easy, non-inconvenience, no responsibility, no animal out there. If you are going to take on the job of buying an animal and take on its care, there is going to be a level of inconvenience to that. There is going to be a likelihood that you don't connect with this animal or like this animal. If you are not familiar with the markets or the animal in general, it's probably best that you don't get this animal back. So I definitely think that with bringing awareness to this by being more mindful, whether we are selling them or whether we are going to be buying one, just knowing that beginner pet in general doesn't mean what it's meant to mean. It doesn't entail this animal that is going to be responsibility free. It's not going to cause you any inconvenience. It is just a simple, easy pet that you can throw in a cage. And if you get tired of it, it kind of just fends for itself and does its own thing, which is what beginner pet is supposed to mean. We also have to stop with oversaturating markets. If we continue and everybody is a part of this. This isn't just old time breeders. This is even a beginner. This is a beginner hobbyist issue, really, because everybody jumps in assuming they have to breed something. They just jump in and it's like, oh, this is a really popular animal. It's selling. Everybody has them. So I'm going to breed it too. So we have to stop oversaturating markets. Bottom line is these animals are suffering due to many of our choices, but the biggest ones is the customer base we are pushing them on as well as the fact that we are purposely misleading people with that phrase, beginner reptile. All right, guys, well, tell me what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Definitely comment down below and let me know what your opinion is on this topic. Do you think it even is a topic or a problem? Or do you see nothing wrong with the way these animals are being treated and uh, they're just fine the way they are? So I'm sure there's a lot of other factors that go into it. These, This is just a take on what I personally think has a huge impact on their current way of being treated in this hobby. Personal opinion, totally fine. If you don't agree at all, I would actually really, really love to hear what your opinions are on it. Um, nonetheless, we have to start doing better. If nothing else, hopefully this video will reach people that are considering getting into bearded dragons or new into bearded dragons and you're currently struggling with keeping it and wanting it uh, because some horrible, horrible decisions get made under that kind of pressure and the only person that truly suffers is this animal. So nonetheless, 
put the information out there, let people do what they please with it. But at least I am attempting to do my part to better the situation. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely give it a thumbs up if you did. If you're new here, please subscribe. And you know, you guys that have been subscribed and supporting the channel, thank you, thank you so much. The love is real and it absolutely warms my heart. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for the support this far. Have an amazing week and I will see you guys next week.